Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power. A more electric team-up than Salah and Mane. Gamble responsibly. See Dunleary.net. Now you're very welcome back. Happy to say that David Snade is with us. David, good evening. Good evening, Joe. What's the crack? Not much. We were just digesting the Harry Maguire news there with Pat Nevin. 21 months suspended sentence. A rather bizarre story all told. I know, yeah. The, the, the pace of it. So it's all happened very quick, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, they were looking for an adjournment initially and then the expectation was this would not be done in a few days, let alone one day. And they stayed late to find him guilty and then they didn't wait very long to give him the sentence and Harry Maguire is gone and I presume never wants to think about it again unless he appeals it. I, it's hard, I mean, I, I, my gut sense at this stage is that this is not a big story and this disappears relatively quickly now barring Gareth Southgate turfing him out of the squad maybe or it becoming a big deal over there but I would think this will disappear relatively quickly. It's hard to say obviously it depends what I should say if he's going to want if he wants to appeal it. And then that'll obviously drag it on more, or does he just accept it, take it on the chin and just kind of walk away from it and then just leave us all in? You'd imagine that's what he'd want to do. I want to talk to you about the situation at Dundalk. You and Dan McDonald writing about it today in the Irish Independent. Filippo Giovanali, the shock successor to Dundalk boss Vinnie Perth. This is all very strange. Tell us about the kamikaze mission stuff, first of all. Yeah, it, it was bad. It's just, it's just purely baffling even in the realm of the league of Ireland, where you god knows what you can expect this is just it's just crazy stuff so obviously like he would have links in america he obviously was kind of a director of coaching with the kind of the metropolitan Noble academy which would be kind of an academy affiliated with new york uh, new york city in the mls and there's links there with, with peak six and the obviously who are the owners of uh of dundalk now and yeah, like this broke and it was obviously with the current situation with COVID, the owners of Dundalk needed to get a new manager in from a, from a green list country to try and get things sorted out straight away. She, uh, Filippo has been in Italy for the last number of months as he uh, as he's laid out and explained. So, but yeah, just basically explaining to, uh, to people that he knows in America and luckily was able to get details of this and he just explains, so yeah, he just said it himself. He goes, it's crazy. He said it himself. It's crazy, but it's true that he's get got this job. And he described it himself. I've seen the messages as a as a kamikaze mission, asking to be prayed for and to tell people in Dundalk to support them. And it's just a very bizarre situation and one which, on the face of it now, looks to just be the culmination of almost two years of behind the scenes turmoil at Dundalk. That. Even though on the pitch things have gone relatively smoothly, despite the fact they've lost Stephen Kenny, there's been obviously a big success off the pitch since Peak Six have took over in January 2018. There's just been more, more, more than mornings of discontent, just continual, maybe kind of I would say infighting and just maybe infighting is, is too drastic, but bit by bit things have just seemed to be disintegrating. So what are you hearing? January 18, peak six takeover. Give us some examples of the murmurings or the issues of contention. Well, if, if you're looking just on the, on, on the face of it, it's a very simple timeline of it would just be the fact that obviously peak six come in, start 2018, they have a new CEO, Mal Brannigan coming in. He had a pretty decent pedigree with, she with Sheffield United, but he's gone within a year. He left after, just straight after the cup final at the end of, at the end of that season. Mm. Then after months then yet Mark Devlin comes in he's someone who would have been involved with, with Bradford Queen's Park Rangers Swindon he's the replacement and then along with all this you also have uh, the CEO Mike Tracy of Peak Six who was the chairman and he was a very he kind of was the face of the group for Peak, for Peak Six at this stage and you're sort of thinking okay well you've lost one CEO another one comes in he Mark Devlin comes in in March, 20, March 2019 and by the end of that season He's gone. But even in the midst of all this, you have Andy Borton, who obviously is the former Sky Sports presenter, mm. who rather famously, you remember last season when after one of the European games with Dundalk, he and after Gary Rogers and I uh, say them the healthy show, he gets uh, gets Jose Mourinho on the phone and FaceTime. But this is just this is just they're just like the headline moments in terms of just the an idea of how teams have 
unraveled auction. But behind all this, you just it's kind of culture is the is the is a kind of a buzzword, but it was the sense of what's being made. Like if you look at what happened when Stephen Kenyon, he came in with them dark when they were at their lowest day, but they just avoided the promotion relegation playoff. He just he had re- totally revitalized the club and and given the club a, a sense it's just a, a new sense of purpose. And that's the reason why Peak Six would even interest it because of what obviously what Dundalk had achieved in the Europa League. And just when, when, when they did arrive, obviously there, there was an element of scepticism, but they seemed pretty up front. They, they didn't come in and say, oh, we're going to change everything in the club and we're going to build a new stadium and we're going to plan for the future. They were very up front on, at, at the start, of it, which was, I think, was, which was to be almost applauded in the sense that they said, we want to be successful and get into Europe. And that's what they were aiming for. They were talking Europa League group stage qualification, mm. trying to keep a push for, for the Champions League. And you looked at them and because of their pedigree, obviously, uh, with, with Peak Six, with their influence in, obviously, with Bournemouth. And then there was also, a kind of, they have a, a small interest in Rome at the time. There was, a, there, was a, there was credibility there. It didn't sense it as if it was just these fellas coming in, trying to make a very quick book who had, who had, had no idea about, about sport or yeah. football. Or involved. So there was that sense. But it's got to the stage now over the last few months. Like Mike Tracy, he, who, as I said, was that face of the group for Peak Six. Peak six seemed a very affable, affable fella and properly threw himself into things. He obviously was the chairman of Dundalk. He also left uh, just just gone at Christmas, and this is when things have unravelled because then you have Matt, Matt Holzer, who obviously the founder of Peak Six. His father Bill has now become the main man of the club, and then this is when all the this is when all the uh, Shenanigans is too, is too flimsy, but this is when things now just began to really unravel, and obviously it culminated with, with Vinnie Perth leaving and uh, well, being sacked, and now the new man in charge, who is Filippo, Filippo uh, Giovanelli, who uh, took his fourth session with the players this morning, and yeah, it's just um, also let the believe there's more going to be more departures from the club, waiting to just hear for confirmation on that, but that seems to be the case that I know, like John Gill seems to be. Looking as if obviously he would have been part of Vinnie Perth's staff, he looks to be on the way, on the way out, waiting for confirmation on that. But it does seem as if that's inevitable. And then obviously Alan Reynolds, who will be involved with the Ireland in twenty ones, will be gone for a time anyway with a training camp. But I believe his position too is uh, is becoming increasingly uncertain. Okay, you said in the piece the chairman Bill Hosier, amongst other things, he signed Josh Gatt on the basis of an interview Josh Gatt had done with ESPN. Fair enough, it must have been an impressive interview. But you also say players and staff at the League of Ireland club are scratching their heads. So there is discontent in the ranks, it would seem. There is confusion at the decisions being made, it would seem. Yeah, well, na- naturally there is. Like, obviously, the players would have seen, I know, the players would have seen all the stuff that came out today in the paper and the, and the Irish Independent about that. And like, there's, been, there's been discontent even in that dressing room, even beyond this, just because of stuff that has been happening within the club. And it's, like, by all accounts, the training session today wasn't the worst from what, it was, from what I was told. Now, I think there's an element now of players trying to actually realise, well, actually, I think this is almost a case of, I wouldn't say rock bottom, because the season still has to go on. They've got to put them the weekend. Like, rock bottom could still, could still come, but like, this is still a group of a group of players who are, Obviously, very professional, very well, and I think they're now at the point where they're like, "Right, something has to happen here. We this can't. What the malaise that has set in here now can't really go on." Mm. But even even though some of the Mormons, from some of the discussion from some players today was well, it, it wasn't as bad as they were expecting in terms of of the training. It's still a manager who himself just can't believe he, he's in this position, and it's just all now. We've obviously. They've, they've, Still, so much to play for in the season. For them, though. that's the thing. Like they're, they're still in Europe with the Europa League, and it's it just seems absolutely baffling that they're in a, in a position where it just everything around the club just seems so negative now. Mm. You said as well in the piece, David, that Vinnie Perth's fate was sealed even before the Champions League qualifier. I'm not sure would that have changed if they had won last week or not. Why was his fate so definitely sealed in the eyes of the Peak Six group? But my my information, and this has been coming from different angles, and like basically, Vinny has been under pressure to pick certain players, and that 
firm were trying to also appease the owner, or oh, the owner, should I say, but Bill Hulsier in this instance, mm. he sort of bit by bit has said, right, well, just tried to kind of keep things ticking over himself. And eventually he just, he wasn't going to obviously do what, what, what was being asked of him. And he was, he paid the price. So now, like we mentioned the fact that the interview with, with Josh Gatt and the fact that he, he, he was signed, like, it's almost, it's, it's, it's very unfair to kind of say, well, he's the cause of all this because he's not, like, he's just a professional footballer who got the chance to come to, to play, to play for them dark and has been stuck in this situation. But it does seem as if he, he is a little bit at the center of this and it's quite unfair. There should be no blame attached to him at all because mm. it, it said like he's just very wants to try and make a living, but it's just an indication of, well, the club kind of the level of recruitment because like, they're coming in. They were talking about wanting to do things professional, wanting to energize the club. Like when, when when Mark Devlin was appointed the CEO, like Mike Tracy was talking about the fact that he wanted to modernize the club operations and then he wanted to engage with supporters. But like other than maybe pumping a bit of money into the kind of facilities of the club in terms of the players, they've just like they've just like shat, tarnished our own reputation and, and shattered the reputation of Dundalk and what have been built over the last number of uh, the last number of years and like. It, it is it is really sad to see because you don't know what's going to happen. That's like, where is this going to end mm. now? You know. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to know what their intentions are. And Vinnie Perth has done several interviews of the, over the last couple of days and he has made the point he's still technically a Dundalk employee and therefore has been restricted in what he could say. But I thought he alluded as well to disagreements and I'm not surprised to hear you say that there was pressure on Perth to pick certain players in the team, which for most managers is going to be a serious area of contention, to say the least, if not just outright war. Well, well, that's yeah, outright war as well. And I suppose from his perspective, and I got Hannah Hart, I haven't spoken to Vinny about what how this has played out in terms of what his thinking on on this was, but like he was in a position, I suppose, where maybe he was thinking, well, the stability of the club, do you walk away and for his own reputation really, but he probably would didn't feel as if he could actually take on the club at the R and, and what was being asked from because at that point as well, there's probably an element from from him of appeasement in the sense of trying to almost keep the owners happy to a degree in, in sense of what what they were asking of him, but then also staying true to what he wanted to do. And it just seemed like like an impossible like an impossible situation really for him. And as I say, it's co- it's come to this and you're sort of thinking like obviously <laughs> I spoke with this on, on, on Saturday on the on the football show when it was mentioned about, about Robbie Kane and the guy spoke about, I just think it would be, I couldn't see it happening purely from the point of view of, like, Dundalk needs someone who's proven to come in and, and get Europe every year, but also from the point of view of, like, Robbie Kane will think of, have the profile of someone who, like, let's be honest, he's probably thinking, well, if I'm going to start, like, he's going to feel as if he would be in a, would have to be the type of person where you could start higher up than Dundalk as well. And they are thinking, well, anyone who's been, look, anyone serious who's looked at what's gone on over the last year and, and what's been happening, they're not going to want to come in and, and, and work for this guy. They're going to want to see, well, okay, if peak six have been in and they've shown that they've been serious football people in the past, well, something needs to change at the, at the top because no one with any credibility would seriously consider coming in and work for this guy. It just wouldn't be possible because there's only going to be one way, one way it's going to end if that kind of pressure is being put on you. Yeah, okay. Well, obviously, the peak six people aren't here to defend themselves. I'm sure they'll argue strongly they're doing everything in the best interest of the club, but... I do take your points on the turnover of staff, which is very marked, and uh, Vinnie Perth's situation and the appointment of Giovanoli. So that's where we are in the dock. Before you go, Stephen Kenny named his first squad yesterday. I saw Gareth Southgate named his today. No Jack Grealish in the England squad. David, David, yeah. is it time, and you might be the man to initiate diplomatic relations, is it time to open our arms to Jack and say, come home, Jack, come home? Well, you can't. Can you? Can no, no. Once you've, once you've, um, once you've declared, or once you've played and declared for another country, as he's done, yeah. as the rules, as the rules are at the moment, I just, I think, I don't. I'm, don't, don't worry about rules. Don't worry about rules. We'll find yeah, a way around the rules. All right, listen. This yeah, is, no, don't, don't, don't get bogged yeah. down in the details. Don't get bogged down in the details. We'll find a way around the rules. Jack, Actually, we might, come home. We might, we might as well try and get Deco Rice back as well. And <laughs> um, no, like. <laughs> Yeah, like the squad. Do you know what? It's actually. Do you know what's frustrating when you see Jack Grealish? So 
I kind of, I had him pegged a little bit as a bit of a, I thought he was really impressive at 20 years, but early days with Villa, I had him pegged as a bit of an, an Astro player almost, you know, he had some nice touches, but did he actually really do it when it mattered? And I think he, he, he's shown for Villa, like, you, like I know obviously there's off fields, but uh, he's a quality player, yeah. he's also someone who can drive a very average team who would otherwise would have been relegated to safety. And it is a shame because, like, obviously he was so in, entrenched in that world and shit that that he's not available because you look at what Stephen Kenny is trying to do now with with Ireland and his plans. If if someone like Jack Grealish had been available to him, it would have been would have been fantastic. But he's made his bed. He has to he has to sleep on it and um that's the thing. And all you can do now and that's what Stephen Kenny is doing now is, is looking forward and it's with a squad with, with a squad that I think a lot of people would be pretty happy with in terms of I don't think again I made the point of the weekend, like it was never going to come in and a totally to like rip up the 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 kind of the form book in terms of who he was who he was picking. Mm. Like Kenny's whole he, throughout his whole career, he's always made he's always made players. I won't say average players, but like just players who haven't been maybe were lacking in confidence or maybe gone through a difficult period or just maybe aren't at the level that they, they probably should be. He's done it at a diff, He's done it at a lower level in terms of with the in the League of Ireland, but also and lads into European football as well and. He's proven he can do that, and that's what kind of that's as, that's almost as as exciting for me in terms of seeing some of the younger lads come in, like Jason Malumbi and Adam Eda, and obviously Troy Paddy, and then obviously there's other lads there who haven't made like Darren O'Shea and stuff. But it's almost more almost as exciting to see what he can do with those players who we've seen in the past and they've started teaching. There's so much more there from them, maybe, or they've shown glimpses and they've shown kind of little snippets here and there of what he can do or yeah. done it for the club, and that's now. What he has to try and get out of them with with Ireland, with Ireland, and obviously he was out at the square announcement yesterday, and he, he was there for a few hours. I was in on the in on the Sunday section, but it was just very positive. It was just very positive in what he was trying to get, even just the message he was trying to get across, and that, even that was just different. But he's going to have to do the walk on the pitch. He said that himself. It's going to be getting down on the training pitch, and getting as much good work done as quickly as possible, and getting his message message across as quickly as possible because. The jury's going to be out very quickly. Yeah, it will, unfortunately. Uh, you are right, by the way. Once um, Jack made the international transfer, once you can't make a second one. But we'll, we'll, we'll sort something out. We've got connections in UEFA. We can do that. Um, the very last word, very last word before we go with the clock upon us. The Obafemi tweet and all that. It's, I mean, kind of trying to read this guy's character from afar. And Hasselhuttle has at times said a few stern words to him publicly. I... I any sense this will become more serious than a momentary young player tweeting a little bit um, carelessly and it'll, it'll all be forgotten I would think yeah I'd imagine so like he I, I met him once in Dublin right. for we don't work doing media work for we don't do media work and he just came across as a very just a very confident lad down to earth and as I, as I say maybe just put it down to kind of exuberance of youth I think James McLean has been in that boat before I remember after was it a Kazakhstan game kind of Having a rallying against the fact that he wasn't included by uh by Capitano left on the bench. So if he needs if he needs someone for social media advice, so yeah. say maybe get on the get on the blog to help him. Yeah. McLean was straight in with a retweet, was he? Was he, yeah? No, 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 he wasn't. He wasn't. Oh. But the fact that you believe that says everything. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> he may, might might have been. He might have been. Um yeah. good stuff. Listen, Dave Snade, I'm sure we'll be uh, reading some more on Stephen Kenny's press comments on uh, Sunday if you were at that. So thanks a mail. Cheers. Good evening, Dale. Take care. Football on Off the Ball. With Paddy Power. A more electric team up than Salah and Mane. Gamble responsibly. See Dunleary.net.